Hello, hello my little seashells and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be over explaining this painting that I have. This video is inspired by Sabrina Vaz. She did a video a long time ago actually that was a like an art show, an art show role play. So, I would definitely recommend watching that one, especially if you like the canvas sounds. I know I do. So, if you love over-explaining and the scratching and tapping and tracing, then I think this video is perfect for you. So, I actually received this painting, well, not received necessarily, but I purchased it um, when I went to an art gallery of this local artist in Kingston. I will leave um, his like Instagram handle in the description box if you're curious. But I really liked this one. And it was a very good price. Their whole thing was like buy high, sell low, so that students can afford art, which I really liked. And this little guy here, I actually have a picture on my phone from when I was in grade nine. I bought this painting last year, but I have this picture from grade nine, and I literally look exactly like this guy, especially with. So, I'll attach a little photo of that on the screen, but when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, this painting is for me, it's meant for me, I just, I, you know, it, it has to belong in my life, so, yeah. We'll first start on this side. also see that there's a little white splotch very faintly, which makes me believe that that's more so his eye and then his beak here. Down below, we have this blue face. And this face is really probably how I've been feeling lately. Um, it looks a little bit sad and just kind of stuck. You know? And that's how I've been feeling a little bit. Just, I don't know, stuck and a bit down. But I really love the blue color. It's very, very pretty turquoisey blue. You guys, if you have seen some of my other videos, I guess specifically talking about this, you know I always have wanted to go and see turquoise blue water, um, somewhere tropical, so I hope to live out that dream one day. So we have the two eyes here, with the little nose, and the sideways kind of, it's not really a smile, it's more of like a type of face. 
very, very sad. I also like that you can see the paint strokes here, that it's messy, and that it goes outside the lines, because life can go outside the lines too, outside of what you've planned. I'm not sure if you can see down here, let me like up to here on me. It, standing up, it's very tall, but I can just move this a bit. So over here you can see very faintly I had them sign it. Right here. Um, and I really like that I had them sign it on the front because they actually said that they never have anyone um, sign have anyone ask them to sign it on the front. They only sign the back. And this was a collab piece between two artists. And the one artist was Indigo. And this was actually his first ever piece of art that anyone had ever bought from him. So I liked that I was part of that memory and um, that I could have been a part of that for those two people, you know. And, and they even said, like, you know, struggling artists, like, we really appreciate the support and everything. And I like that I could, you know, support them, of course, local artists. But also, I mean, he's always going to remember that, you know, his first painting sold at his first gallery showing. Like, it's really cool. can see is this very beautiful bubblegum pink, which I think is what I strive for on a daily basis with my life. Just everything perfect and pink, but obviously life sometimes can be a bit more like this guy than the bubblegum pink in the background. Just um, take you up a little bit higher so you can see the top portion of the painting, okay? So I'll just move you up there and I will kneel. So up here we have this angry looking guy. He is kind of scary. We have some dark burgundy color on the side here and then some red. You can see his eyes are very angry, very evil. And although they have the pink um, eyeballs, it's actually bleeding through like tears or like pink blood, which I find really interesting. Kind of adds to the scariness of this guy up here. He has a sharp, pointy nose. And this is a bit of pink here, but it almost looks like he's sticking out his tongue. I'm not sure if that was the intended look, but that's what it looks like to me. That's how I interpret it. His head is these like pointy horns here. And on this side as well. And then this kind of big ear. I really think that the pink bleeding through the eyes, like tears, is... I don't know. Just adds a bit of depth. This guy, to me, reminds me of the guy in Insidious. necessarily, but that's what he reminds me of. He's quite scary. 
And then you have this cute little like yellow chicken guy underneath. So a bit of contrast there. paint strokes are also much thicker and more visible here they're a bit more strained you can see the red paint strokes it's more angry it's more just there's more frustration there's more struggle over on this side and this guy is so powerful that the red paint does bleed through bleeds through down through onto the yellow To this side which is my favorite side of the painting we have the body of this little guy I love this guy so so much he's my absolute favorite and basically the whole reason I bought this painting um, I mean don't get me wrong I love everything and how all the colors come together but this was my muse and like I said there's that picture that I think I'm literally identical to this guy this piece though is so cool. I love art like this. It's definitely something to talk about when people come over and I don't have it up on my wall anywhere in my apartment because it's so heavy and I need help putting it up but I'm excited for when I do have my own like home or apartment that I'll be in more long term and I can have So here we have the body of the guy. It goes down into a little point, almost like a fingernail or something. Claw, maybe. It's kind of the shape of it. looks like a ghost a ghost and you know you might interpret this part as a face here the two eyes and the nose the gray and white then we have the actual face so this is again that turquoise blue color but there's actually some texture here there's some squiggly lines as you can see and it's like actually like if they had taken the back of a paintbrush brush which maybe they did and like carved into the paint I think that's might have might have been what happened and you can see the texture and I like that they added that in did it instead of up, down, up, down, up, down. I think they went like this. Like. Almost like a bunch of C's. And then we have some pink paint splatter on the guy as well. Pink paint splatter here at the bottom. Over on the face. The face. The sides here. I'll zoom in. 
in after and show you guys more in depth so you can really see the colors coming through underneath. I just unfortunately can't zoom in, which is crappy. I thought I could. Okay. So then you have the actual face. Now this blue thing is like a mask. see there it's like a mask that he's wearing over top so we have the blue eyes sorry my nose is itchy but his eyes are like actually quite large they're black and then you have the blue coming through it even looks like there's a smiley face through mine I really like this guy. I don't know why I particularly love him so much, but I love the expression that he has too on his face. Sometimes it's hard to explain why we like certain pieces in art, but I mean, sometimes you don't necessarily have to find a specific reason why you love it. You can just love it, right? I have no piece like this in my, I guess you could say, art collection. I don't have many actual art pieces, especially from any local artists. Um, most of my art, to be honest with you, I get from like winners or prints. Not to say that that's not art necessarily, but there is a difference, I'd say, between like a local artist and something you purchase at winners. I don't think any local art would end up at winners. I wonder. Because I always assumed the art that ends up at winners is like mass produced, but maybe it's not. Leave a comment if you know. But then we'll move up to the top of the painting, okay? And here we have the top of the painting. And this, I love this part so much. It's like a little rainbow of all the colors in the painting combined in this corner. So we have that gorgeous turquoise blue here. With some black paint splatter. We have the yellow coming through and behind the ear. More pink, more pink here. And then we also have that burgundy color from this guy coming over here as well. Some blue strokes of paint mixed in with the red. Some very good texture here. Like I said, I'll zoom in after so you can see that better. But then you can also see here his long ears on his mask. Pointy ears. black and then that same type of texture zigzag in the ears
so that's mostly all of the painting but I think that the more you look at it the more you'll find like every time I look at this painting I find a little new splatter or a new interpretation or something so I like that it kind of has never-ending possibilities but before we end off I will just take you up close and show you the texture of the painting a bit more just briefly um, so you can see that and enjoy it, okay? I will be changing the adjustment in terms of positioning mic and camera, so I'm not too sure if it'll be much louder or much softer, but I'll try and adjust the best I can when editing. But just a little warning here, I guess you could say that the sound and angle is going to be different. see a bit more of the texture and the strokes of paint like I was saying over here there's some really good texture there okay you can see the splatter a bit better and the red coming through in certain spots yep they are much better okay you can see the texture I was talking about in here where it's almost like they took the back of a paintbrush to scrape and make these lines here on the like mask per se and then you can see all that black paint splatter coming through it almost makes it look like holes or something okay now coming on to this side you can see the pink bleeding through a bit better here through the eyes And then you can see that bit of pink there that I said almost looks like his tongue is sticking out. Up close you can really see how evil the eyes kind of appear to be. Scared and evil. And then we have that yellow guy right underneath. Okay. And then down here you'll be able to see the signatures better. So I'm pretty sure the first artist is Fran Francesco, Francesco, and then Indigo is the other artist, and he actually drew a little skull guy, which was nice too, a little a piece of art on art. And then down below, it's kind of hard to show you because my mic is blocking it, but we have the little sad guy at the bottom. But here also you can see how the red is so powerful from this guy up here that it bleeds through the yellow. It bleeds all the way down, 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 down to the bottom, to the bottom, to the bottom, to the bottom. But yeah, my little seashells, that is this painting that I wanted to share with you guys as inspired by the Sabrina Vaz art show that I was telling you about that she did. That video is probably three years old now, so I still watch it all the time and love it. But hopefully if you have also loved that video, you'll like this one as well. But yeah, that is all for this video, my seashells. I hope that you like the painting, the over-explaining, and the canvas touching and tapping the hand movements and like I said I will link the artist's information down below they are local artists in Kingston, Ontario so I don't know if they have a website or not but um, yeah just if you want to follow them or if you're in Kingston and want to buy any of their art okay love you all so much my seashells <laughs>